working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working.
worship by Maddie, Noah, and Wade. So we're excited to get back together soon, hopefully, and hear them live in concert here. I don't know when, but soon. Uh, we have a great show for you tonight between two guitars with me and Rogelio. I heard he took over the show at the beginning. It's okay. He knows not to now. He's, he's good. We had, we had a little talk during worship. Uh, I'm glad you guys are here. I have a great show. We, we're going to have uh, some videos. We have some games. We have a great guest. Um, but I don't know about you. As at least for me, I'm getting a little tired of quarantine. Uh, I want to go out of my house more often, and I want to see you guys especially. Uh, so I found this video on some tips and tricks to survive quarantine. So go ahead and check out this video. This should help us all out. What's up, fan jam and hammies? Hope all is Osteen, you know? Healthy and wealthy. Now, we're hearing all this talk about we're all in this together and stay at home and just go about life as normally as possible. Well, to that, I only have one word. Yoko. Am I right, boys? Yoko! Yoko simply stands for you only quarantine once. It's not a choice, but a way of life. Why simply sit around and let the days pass when you carpet diem and please the day? To put it in layman's terms, Yoko is simply a lifestyle for those who choose to make the best out of our current circumstances. When life hands you lemons, you take those lemons and you throw them back at life because I have a very strict hypoallergenic citrus allergy that causes me to go into anaphylactic shock at a moment's notice. So I present to you, Yoko in action. Let's go. Eating 30 pounds of Supreme slow cooked chicken nachos at 7 a.m. after staying up all night playing Warzone? Yeah! 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 Missed your grandpa and not able to see him since this whole thing broke out? No worries. Make your homie into a grandpa. Yo go! 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 Catching up on Judge Judy? Yeah, no! Guilty! 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 Face your fears? Yoko? Yoko! Yoko! Wrestle Taser? Boys? Yoko! Yoko! Okay, dude, okay, dude, a penal allergy! No, guys, no, that's... Dying alone? Yo! Go! This is actually a real fear of mine. Anybody else have any other fears? Uh, public speaking? Yo! Go! So I've gathered you here today to, um, to talk about the cell leaving the... The cell leaving the nucleus, um... Host. Playing catch with random objects? Yo! 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 Got this. What is that, crowbar? Yo go! 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 Oh, hey there, neighbor. What's that? <laughs> All right, so there's a couple tips for quarantining if you want them. I, I would suggest, though, don't throw a crowbar at your family or your friends, okay? Let's just cut that one out. It didn't work out very well. Uh, but that's, <laughs> hopefully you guys are doing well. Uh, man, I cannot wait to get back together. Uh, if you guys, I just want to say, before we go into the show, if you guys need anything or want to talk or anything, you can always contact the church or contact me. I am still available during the week to talk to you guys. So if you're going crazy 
in quarantine and trying some of those things, like on that video, and you want to talk, you can give me a call or the church call. All right, so tonight we have a great show. We have an awesome guest. Our guest tonight is a French trivia expert and 80s pop song listener, Madeline Lee Bauer. Welcome. Hi, how are you? Hi. COVID high five, we have to do this. Okay, yeah. It's just as good as a high five with yeah. less sound. Yeah, totally. I mean, we can make the smacking sound. Like, let's just try it again, ready? Smack! Wapa! 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 I like wapa. I don't know. I didn't want to. I didn't want to do it too much because I didn't want to spit. Because you know we don't want to. I don't have a mask on. So, I don't want the COVID. Um, well, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here. Too. How you doing with the quarantine? It's been okay. Yeah. School yeah. sucks, but yeah, so you, it. you still have to finish online and all that. But, yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. fun. I mean, half of school made it a, what made it bearable is you got to see your friends and hang out. Mm -hmm. now, you, now you don't. Yeah. yeah. Now we have to text each other. But so you're almost good. there, right? Like a month yeah. left. Yeah, I think or like so? three weeks left. Three weeks, okay. Well, hopefully most of you guys are close and I uh, would just challenge everyone, finish strong, even though it's different. You're almost there. Yeah, you're almost, to you're almost there. Get All right, it. so um, we're gonna play a game before we start the interview. Now, I have a question. Have you ever, maybe during quarantine, you've been a little bored, mm. you're walking around the house or you stumble on something that your parents have or a tool your dad has and you're like, what in the world is this thing for? All the time. <laughs> okay, so I'm not the only one. I, I've run into items or you see them at garage sales or you see them somewhere in a store, even at the store, you're like, I, what is this object mm -hmm. actually for? Like, I can't imagine what this thing would do. It's weird looking, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you guys at home have stumbled upon something like that. Well, we have a game tonight. We're gonna show some objects uh, and then we're gonna have you guys guess. Now, how it's gonna work is we're gonna do it elimination style. Okay. So kind of like what you used to do in youth group, everyone would stand up yeah. and there'd be two options and everyone, you know, puts up number one or two or A or B or, or they do a thumbs up or thumbs down or whatever. And then if you get it wrong, you sit down mm -hmm. and then we go through elimination. Last one standing wins. So we're going to try that. So what we need you to do before we get started is we need you to, even if you already signed in and said hi, if you want to play the game, you need to type out your name on chat because we're going to write it down. Uh, we have our moderator. She's gonna write it down. We're gonna have a list of names and Then once we start the game, you can't jump in after that. So it's all it's got to be going right now Make sure your video is up to date. Uh, well, if you're listening to me say that then it is <laughs> um, But put all the names we're gonna put all the names in the list and then we're gonna go through and if you get them wrong We're gonna cross your name off and the last person left is gonna win so Right now, start typing your names off, out if you want to play the game. So we're going to give you guys a couple minutes. I know there's like a, a 15 second delay or something. Yeah. So um, while we wait for that delay, I'm going to put the, the rules up. So put the, go ahead and put the slide up. You should be able to still hear us. Okay, so go back to the first rule. Go back to the first one. There's a title. There you go. So you'll be presented with a picture of an uncommon tool, object, device, along with two possible explanations of why they exist. So our job is to figure out its true purpose, okay? So I have the answers here, so I'll know. We're gonna wait for a couple seconds, make sure everyone signs in. Okay, we've got Ethan, Vern, Natalie, Brophy family. Okay, we'll do Brophy family, L's one. Jack, we got Thomas, we got Nick. We're gonna give you guys a couple more seconds. Anyone else want to play? How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Eight, we got Alana. Okay, we're gonna give you guys a couple more seconds and then we're gonna type in first slide. When we type in first slide, uh, if you haven't put your name down, then you're not gonna be able to jump in after that. So let's give it a couple more seconds. Anyone else wanna play? I know there's a delay, so you haven't heard me say that yet. Okay. Uh, okay, let's put in slide number one. Okay. Slide number one, dot, 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 coming. Okay, go ahead and type it in. Let me know when it's in. Oh, Isaiah. Okay, slide one. Show us what slide one is. Okay, slide one. It says, this is called a halogen bar, or it's called a plat so so sewer. I don't know what that is. So it's either for forcible entry with police or firefighters, or it's to... Um, Garden, it's a gardening tool for arid climates to prepare soil that's really tough. Now, to me, it looks like a back scratcher. Yeah. What would you do with that? I have no idea. Pick if I'm your, honest. You could pick your teeth and scratch your back at the same time. That's an idea. I think that would be it. So, go ahead and put one or two. All you have to do is comment one or two. 
and we will we will tell you if you want or not. So number one or number two? We got a couple ones. I feel like it's a, All right, something Madison, like... you can still do the game, even though you got in after the slide thing. We're, Madison, go for it. You can still answer one or two, Madison. All right, got some ones. Everyone thinks one, man. Someone, what if we all lose the first round? That would be funny. Yeah, that would <laughs> that'd be kind of sad. Uh, maybe they're just a bunch of sheep, and they're all just doing the same thing. <laughs> they're all just smiling at each other. Okay, so I think everyone answered. Kaylee, what do you think? Did everyone answer? All right. Next, what is it? What's the answer, Wade? It is number one. You guys all got it right, so you're all still in the game. Okay, go ahead and type, Kaylee, type in next slide. Just put next, so we know. All right, Wade, what's the next one? Okay, this is either called uh, something that's, or not called, it's a common for a baby toy. It's created to teach uh, geometrical concepts to small children or for chewing and teetering, teething, or it's a cable manager that separates and organizes your electronic cables. I think this is a toothbrush for an elephant. That's yeah, what it looks like to me. but it also looks some, like something my <laughs> fish would swim through. Oh, there you go. It could be like one of those little like, uh, underwater landscapes. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I could see the fi well, it depends on the size of it. I would have yeah. to see the size of it. I mean, a small fish. A small fish, yeah. yeah. All right, go ahead and cast your votes, guys. All right. Okay, did everyone cast their votes? We got one. How many people do we have total? Okay, we're waiting for a couple people. How many did we have total? Nine. Nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. That's all nine. Okay, what's the answer? Okay, this is getting easy. It's number two. You guys all got it again. Okay, so far you guys are on it. Next one. All right. So. This is either an automobile blood pressure reader, or, or sorry, uh, that checks the pressure and spacing in car shocks, so it's for car shocks, yeah. or it's an inflatable shim that holds door windows up when you're working on a project. So it either holds windows up or holds shocks up. I think this is the um, inflatable whoopee cushion. It's the quick whoopee cushion. You, know you can stick it under someone's chair and you can squeeze it later when they're... <laughs> It's the reverse whoopee cushion. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know how that... I think that'd be hard to use. All right, <laughs> cast your vote, guys. One or two. All right. Everyone's voting. What do you... I, it also looks like it could be like a camping pillow. Have you ever seen those camping pillows? They're actually quite handy to hold up stuff when you're mounting a window. All right, so if you not if you guessed one, you are out. So t figuratively speaking, you have to sit down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is the volume off? It's it down. Oh, is this microphone not working? Can you check the audio input and make sure it's on? Double click. Double click um, the blue mono input. And make sure it's selecting this mic. If you don't input, let me see.
Okay. I think we're on. Are we back? Hopefully. Hopefully we were back. I'm so sorry. We had technical difficulties again. I don't know what it is <laughs> with this with this room, but for some reason we keep having internet issues only when we do the show. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Satan doesn't want us to do the show because it's an awesome True. So I think he's messing with stuff. Okay. <laughs> so someone confirm that you're hearing me right now. Ah, there we go. Thanks guys. Thanks for sticking around. Okay. We're gonna real quick. Wait, will you put it up on the screen so I can see what's going on? Cause uh, we had we had to turn it off. So uh, do a right click on that. Yeah, and then select the second screen. Impl yeah. Uh, okay, we're gonna get back to the game. I'm so sorry. We were on the weird object that looked like a padlock. I think is the one. Yeah. Right. Okay. Put that slide back on for the game. Okay. So did we answer this one? Okay. Put your answers down again. Is it one or two? Double-sided fishing or a small weight added to a fish. They're both fishing options, so apparently it has something to do with fishing. Personally, I think this looks like a stopwatch that didn't get finished. Is it a mirror that the fish <laughs> look in so they can make sure they look good before oh, they get reeled out? It's a mirror for fish. Yeah. It's a vanity, fish vanity. It's a fish vanity. All right. So they're guessing. Guess again, please. I know we're, we're starting over now. So we got some twos. We got a one. All right. I'm not sure how many people are still with. Might have lost some in the technical difficulties. We got two, 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 one. All right. Well, at least it's working. Okay. How many people are we down to? Right. Jack, are you still on? If you're still on, we're waiting for you to answer. If not, we'll have to move on, buddy. All right. It's hard to do these games online, but they're still fun. Yeah. All right. Jack, are you still there? Hopefully you are, buddy. I know. I feel bad that the technical difficulties might not be. Okay, let's see the answer. What is it? One or two? It is. You have it? It is one. Okay. It is fishing. So that means most of you guys got it wrong. Does that mean Isaiah won? Isaiah won. Isaiah, wow. you won the game. Okay. So we'll look at these last couple ones just for fun. But Isaiah, you won. Everyone thought it was the second one, a small fishing weight. It's actually a double-sided fishing magnet that's used for finding metal objects. Oh. So it's actually not, you put it on the end of a fishing pole, but you throw it in to, to pull out stuff that's metal. That's cool. I've seen, I've seen them do this. They pull out like all kinds of stuff that people drop in, yeah. in the you know, lake or whatever. Okay, let's see the next one for, just for fun. What? All right, Maddie, what do you think this is? This, I have no idea. This is a massage tool used by ancient people. Yeah. <laughs> that looks dangerous though. No, it is. What is it? One or two? It is number one. It's called an ads. I don't even know how to say that. Ads? Uh, <laughs> I, I actually have oh. used one of these before. It's it's for wood. It's a woodworking tool. I want to say, but there's no. A days? Yeah. Ads? It's not ADA. Aids? I'm just Aids? Young. Probably some old. Okay, next one. Let's see what it is. It's for fun. This That is... looks like a mousetrap. <laughs> kind of looks like a mousetrap. Uh, is it a Garvey or is it a Darby? I don't know. Garvey has more like of a description. I actually, I actually used this one before. You know which one it is? No. Pick one or two. I'm curious. Let's see if Maddie can get these now. One or two. One. One. It is two. Okay. You're right. Okay, next one. <laughs> next one. Let's, let's go through these kind of quick. Okay, is this for taking toilet paper a spindle or is this a portable carbon monoxide? I think it's or simple. part of a gun from Star Wars. <laughs> All of the above? All of the above. It's actually a to toilet paper spindle. I'm really? It's a talking toilet. It says it's a talking. Maybe it says, nice wipe. Good job. I don't want to hear that at 3 a.m. You said space. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hey, we're working. Are we? Cool. Wait, we're going. We're working somehow. Okay, put it put put it back on there, uh, Kaylee. That we're working, I guess. Okay. Just kidding. Oh, sorry, is it down again? Is it down again? Mine's working. Okay, we're gonna go with it. Wait, is it working? Yes or no? Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maddie. So um, we didn't get to finish the game. We're having technical difficulties, but that's okay. Okay. Oh, if you guys are still on, stick with it. Hopefully, we still got some people on. No one jumped off too fast. I know we, we didn't think we were going to get it working, but we're up and running. Okay. okay. Let's start our interview. Okay. <laughs> Pray for technology, everyone at home. Okay. okay. So, 
first journalistic question for you. Mm -hmm. Is it true, I heard something about this, that when you were younger, the sunlight used to reflect off your dad's watch and bounce onto the ceiling and the walls, <laughs> and that you thought it was fairies, and you used to be really excited that there was fairies flying around the house. <laughs> Is that your story? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have one major question. Yeah. Do you remember the day that you realized it was your dad's watch? Did it crush you? I mean, I kind of thought it was funny because I was like, all of a sudden I looked over and I was like, why is he covering his watch when I look over? Like, that's just weird. Oh, he was playing with you. Yeah. So like when I wasn't looking, I was like, oh, there's a fairy like on the wall. Yeah. And then I'd look over and he'd go like that. And I'm like, Wait a minute. <laughs> I think you're the fairy. <laughs> <laughs> so you did, you figured it out on your own. Someone yeah. didn't have to tell it to you. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's better. If someone like, what if you went your whole life thinking that and then someone's like, no, it's a reflection. There's no such thing as fairies, dude. <laughs> that would be embarrassing. Uh, that's a good story, though. It's a good yeah. story, you know. Um, and it kind of brings us to our interview tonight. Your dad, mate, he kind of broke your trust a little bit. Yeah. I mean, tricking you with your... I mean, obviously, it was small. You got over it. Yeah. You know? But, yeah. That's actually a funny joke. If your dad's watching, I think it's pretty funny. I do. But, um, you're talking about... We want to talk about trust tonight, okay? Yeah. So, tell me what you've learned or your experience with trust. So, okay, yeah, trust. Um, like you said, my yeah. dad kind of broke my trust as a kid. <laughs> thought it was fairies. But, um, like, I really had to learn how to trust recently, like over the last few years, because I guess I've tried to take things into my own hands. Mm. And I realized that nothing was working out when I wasn't trusting, like, God. Yeah. I never tr was, like, trusting God. I was just like, I got this. You just stay over there. I'll take care of it. Yeah. But I guess, yeah, I've, I've had a lot of, like, friendships and stuff that were broken that when they tried to come back, I've had to trust God and mm. to letting them into my life if that's what he wanted. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, trust is one of the most important parts of a relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, not just human relationships, but obviously our relationship with God, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, they go hand in hand, trusting God and then trusting the relationships that we have on earth. Uh, yeah, it's something that I think every one of us is going to continue to learn how to trust God more. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we'll ever get 100% there where we trust Him fully, but the closer we get, the better we are. I mean, we can never, we never let down if we put our trust in Him, mm -hmm. right? So you have some verses you wanted to share. What yeah. was the verse you wanted to share? It's Nahum 1.7. All right, turn to Nahum. So. Cool little book. It's actually really short, so I, yeah. it's fun. Every now and then, I'll just read through these like little, um, little books of the uh, prophets of the Old Testament. Yeah. They're fun. So Nahum chapter mm -hmm. one. You said verse seven. Seven. All right, guys, turn with me to Nahum one seven, and go ahead and read that for us. Okay. It says, "The Lord is good. When trouble comes, He's a strong refuge, and He knows everyone who trusts Him." Mm. So what's your favorite thing about that verse? I think it's the fact that it says, um, and he knows everyone who trusts him. That's my favorite part yeah. about it too, yeah. He knows everybody. That's just crazy. Yeah, it's not just like, okay, hey, you can trust God. Yeah. But God knows you mm -hmm. and how much you trust him mm -hmm. and what you need to trust him with. Yeah. It, it's like a two-way street mm -hmm. instead of just a one-way. Like, okay, you, we all know we're supposed to trust God. Yeah. We all, we all get that concept. But then he's saying, like, but I also know you, mm -hmm. and I know what you need. Mm -hmm. So not only can you trust me, I also know what you need. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I think it's really important, too, like, this verse during, like, the quarantine, mm. too, because I know for me as, like, a senior, I'm kind of afraid, and I don't know what's going to come, like, with graduation, yeah. and I missed prom, so I guess I just need to trust that God's going to do good, that good is going to come out of this, which I think a lot of good is coming mm -hmm. out of it. And I think it's just important that we trust God that he will do what needs to be done Yeah. during this time. Yeah, I keep going back to the idea of our plans have been ruined, mm -hmm. but God's plans are never ruined. Yeah, exactly. So, you know what? There's something going on. God's doing something. I mean, I don't like it mm -hmm. <laughs> personally right now. <laughs> but if it's God's plans, then, hey, I'm going to like it at the end. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, when we get there, we'll see why. Yeah, there's um, a reason why he did it. <laughs> So we can definitely trust in him. Mm -hmm. um, so talk a little bit more about that, those relationships. Like how, how's God, uh, how's your relationship with God grown in trust with him? Like I know you were telling me about it earlier. Like I said earlier, um, 
I try to take things in my own hands. So I think for me, it's really been about just giving everything to him. Because mm. if there's things I can't control, God's going to be able to control it. Yeah. And it's just like about following him and listening to the promises he gives us in the Bible and trusting that if he says, like, you are loved, you need to trust that you are loved. Mm. And that if he's going to do something for you, you need to trust that he's going to do it for you. It's just about yeah. like trusting as word. Yeah, trusting his word yeah. and knowing that he's going to lead us in no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's okay to, I think sometimes we have questions mm-hmm. and we question God. It's okay to search. Yeah. To um, wonder, but it's never helpful just to fall on doubt. Just mm-hmm. be like, I don't think God can really do this. Yeah. Because there's nothing he can't do. It's so <laughs> foolish to doubt him. Mm-hmm. Um, questioning him is one thing. And, and learning more about him is, is different, but doubting completely is not, it's not ever going to help us. Mm-hmm. It's only going to make us uh, more afraid and more yeah. anxious. I know mm-hmm. you were telling me that uh, not trusting him, co- that's what it caused for you, right? It yeah. caused anxiety in your life. It caused a lot of um, anxiety, stress, fear. I know during this time, like the quarantine, it's caused a lot of fear, not trusting God. I There's been moments where I'm like, why are you doing this? Mm-hmm. And it's provoked fear in me. Mm-hmm. And it also, with not trusting God, we look towards the world for our answers mm. and for our solutions. Yeah. And we idolize things that aren't trustworthy when we should be idolizing God. God is just, he's so trustworthy yeah. over anything. Yeah, there's no reason we can't trust him for everything. Yeah. And, that, and that's what you see in society. So many people are fearful. Most of those people are ones who aren't Christians. Yeah. They don't know God. So. Mm-hmm. Of course they're full of fear they don't yeah. have anyone to trust in mm-hmm. what are they going to trust in the government what are they going to trust in like their leaders uh, their families their friends those can only take you so far yeah and, yeah and when you trust in him you find peace yeah because you know that mm-hmm. everything's going to be okay yep um okay so what, what else did you have you learned about a trust you had a well for like example there's a situation in my life where there was somebody who wanted to come back into my life mm-hmm. after we had both been really hurt by each other Mm. and I really struggled with letting God take control of the whole situation and trusting in him yeah because I kept thinking like it's my life I can figure this out there's I just need to figure this out and it will be God's way like God will be okay with it but it was like for a good two days I waited and was like no I'm not gonna let this person back into my life yeah I just kept thinking about the negatives and I it kind of brought back like angry feelings and hurt feelings and finally after like a day I was like okay I need to trust God I told God I was like it's in your hands if this person's supposed to come back into my life then let them come back into my life yeah and he also gave me the will to forgive this person yeah the things that had happened and I actually found peace and I'm super happy now that this person's back in my life and Mm. it just I'm glad that I trusted God in that situation because if I didn't, I would have been yeah. really. I really mean, because e- either choice, if you would have made it in your own, in your own mind, like whether to be, you know, that restore the relationship or break it apart. If you did it in your own power, you never would have, you know, it, it would have been done in a way that was not. Either way, it would have mm-hmm. been bad. But now it's like you, you trust God to say, okay, God, you show me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what, you know, I, I'm still learning this lesson. That's what we got to do with mm-hmm. almost every situation. All right, God, there's no right or wrong answer. Like, whether you mend or break a relationship can be good or bad, depending on yeah. the relationship. There's no right or wrong answer. It's not mm-hmm. a cut and dry, yeah. like, good or bad thing. Mm-hmm. So how do we deal with those things in life? There's a lot of things like that. Like, yeah. where do I go to college? Or what do I do? Mm-hmm. Those aren't cut and dry decisions of good and bad. Mm-hmm. They're not moral. Yeah. So what do we do with those? Mm-hmm. I think that's your answer. You just yeah. said it. We trust him and say, okay, you're going to mm-hmm. open the doors. This is right for me. You'll tell me. I've had that, yeah. that happen a lot in my life, and it's always good. I'm, it's always better when I've trusted him. Yeah. yeah. And in that relationship, the first time we had been, um, like, friends and stuff, yeah. it just, we I wasn't trusting God at all. Yeah. I was just like, I can do this. We're good. Yeah. And it fell apart, if right. I'm honest. It fell apart. And then when that person came back, and we were both trusting God, it's just been amazing since. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I mean, that's what every good, solid relationship is built on. You, one other person, and, and God in the middle, and, mm-hmm. and that's how it's it's held together. Yeah. Um, if you don't have that, it's going to fall apart, so. Mm-hmm. 
All right, great. I, I, that's good to hear. I mean, um, what would you tell all the students that are listening at home, just uh, practically speaking, like what can, what are some things they can do? Honestly, like just pray. Yes. Just give your worries one, yeah. to God. Um, like he's just going to take care of you. When I talk to God, I feel so much peace because it's like that friend yeah. you can talk to where, but he's greater. He's just, yeah. he understands you. He gets all your emotions. And when you pray to him, honestly, your worries will go away if you give it all to him. Absolutely. And if you just trust. Yeah. And the, the line's always open to God mm -hmm. and he's never going to miss your call. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's awesome yeah. too. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, I challenge you guys at home. Like if there's things that you're worried about, you're not, and sometimes, sometimes we don't realize we're doing it, but think about it. If there's things that you're not trusting God in, um, challenge you guys at home to tr trust in him uh lay those things before him pray for those things and, and give it to him and uh let him mm -hmm. direct your path you know yeah. man makes plans but god directs our path yeah and so even though we might have an idea of what we want it's usually something different that god is going to show us mm -hmm. and it's always cool when god shows you something yeah. so all right great maddie well thank you so much for being on the show sorry for all the technical difficulties okay. I, I mean you, you go through it, you practice it, you get it all set up, and then you never know. Something yeah. happens. It wasn't even the internet this time. It was our software. <laughs> it just decided to keep quitting. Really? I, yeah, I don't know what. The internet's actually fine <laughs> this time. For once. <laughs> For once, the internet's fine. It's just the software is like, nah, we don't want to do it. We're good. <laughs> um, but we got it. Good job. I, I love the topic of trust. Uh, you guys, um, I don't know when we're going to meet again. It's going to be soon. I'm praying. Uh, until then, we're going to keep doing this. So tune in next week for our show at 7 p.m. again. Hopefully, we won't have another issue with technical <laughs> difficulties. I don't know. I can't promise that. It's kind of part of the show now. I almost feel like we should build it in. Yeah, every episode. <laughs> that's part of what will go wrong this time. Um, no, let's not do that. Uh, but continue to uh, connect as much as you guys can. I encourage you guys to connect with me or another leader if you haven't. Um, I know lots of people do Zoom calls and stuff. I haven't necessarily been doing a lot of those. I like this format better, um, but I, I one-on-one -on -one I love to do. So if you need anything, call me or call the church or we can connect you with another leader. Uh, I want to encourage you guys to check out the worship. We have a worship, a whole set. You got, you were involved in that this mm -hmm. week. Um, so now we're going to have like about 15, 16 songs on there. Nice. So anytime you feel down, you can listen to youth worship or any worship, of course, but youth worship and make you feel a little more home. And then tune in on Sundays to hear Pastor Gary um, I've been helping him do all the live stream stuff, mm -hmm. so that's been really cool. And but I, I I like the actual fact that you guys can still watch our our pastor yeah. on Sunday mornings. He's going to be finishing Revelation, and hopefully when we get back together, we'll start a new book together. So, thank you guys. That's our show for tonight. God bless you. We love you guys. Bye.